Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, Hi. I am Karen Lillian Rudman. I'm the curator at the Art Center Highland Park. And we are trying something new. Um, we always like to have artist talks um, during our exhibits. And because this is a virtual exhibit, we are going to have a virtual artist talk. So I'm so excited to welcome our featured artists and guest jurors. And I'm just going to explain for a second what that means to those of you who might not know. So each of our artists, um, each of our exhibits, when we structure them, we have a specific theme and we find artists that fit that theme or we are, or the artists work inspire a theme in this case. Um, and then we ask them to help juror an open call for entry. So we put out a call for entry on a third party site called Entry Thingy and different artists submit their work. And um, Raji and Olia very generously um, juried and selected the artwork to accompany their amazing work in the exhibit. So I want to welcome Alia Nova and Raji Arel. They are both Chicago artists. They are incredible. Their work circles around the theme of art and science, which is the theme of the exhibit. Um, I feel like this is a very um, relevant and purposeful topic right now and particularly meaningful. So I'm excited to share their um, their work with you and I'm excited for them to be able to speak about their work themselves because, you know, I think as artists versus curators, I think the artists are always best at speaking about their own passion and work. So I'm going to introduce um, uh, Aliyah first and I'm going to try to share um, her work on my screen so that you can see the work while she's talking, but I'll let her introduce herself first. Uh, hello, thank you for having me. Uh, my name is Olya Nova, and uh, uh, in the exhibit I have paintings, drawings, uh, and one 3D object that I call a model. And my main theme is air, and um, so air is uh, uh, I, I'm a little bit nervous. It's <laughs> We're all a little nervous. So, I, I you, you take so, uh, so AA is uh, transparent and uh, weightless, and uh, but it's uh, filled with a different uh, phenomena, uh, sound and color, uh, a kind of energy, and I'm interested in this uh, kind of phenomena that can be felt but not necessarily seen and uh, so so my main focus when I work is uh, non-objective form and uh, when it comes to form uh, I'm interested in articulation of space so my non-objective uh, non-referential space is uh, moving and expanding and I'm interested in dematerializing the objects, the form, so I use fluidity and translucency, and uh, I want to eliminate hard edge forms. And when the work is finished, I would like it to have this feeling of lightness and transparency of air. So the work in the show, I started making it in 2015 after spending several years making studies for the work. And uh, the studies include figuring out the process, uh, the mark making, how um, to make my forms. And I made a lot of drawings as uh, studies of form. So uh, in that sense, the drawings that are in the show, um, they are studies for future works and uh, so when I make paintings I actually open draw with paint uh, and uh, yeah. one second. I'm trying to share my screen I'm having trouble um, so I just want people to know if they're listening they can go onto the Art Center's website into the virtual exhibit um, of art and science and Aliyah's first four pieces 
Uh, the fourth one is a piece called Air. So you really can see what she's talking about. Um, I'm just having trouble with the technical sharing the screen for some reason. Okay, sorry. Yeah, so, so drawings that, I have drawings in the show. So drawings, um, as I mentioned, is a way of studying my non-objective form. And a lot of questions that I ask of myself, I first work out in these drawings. Uh, so that's why there are studies, in, in a way, studies for paintings. And I also reinterpreted my drawings as 3D objects, which one of them is uh, on display. And um, so initial idea for the object of the model, the sculpture, <laughs> uh, was to make something completely transparent. And as I was making it, uh, so the model was developing, uh, kind of as all my all of my other work in the process so I was adding and subtracting details um, and then I added, added light in the final stage and the light added and you mentioned to the work because as I mentioned I wanted something completely transparent and I couldn't actually take a picture of it because my camera couldn't uh, see it the edges mm -hmm. so once i had the light so it in a way it gave body to the work and they made it visible so so that's uh so kind of a description of what i have Brilliant. the show um i'm glad that we can see the piece behind you since i can't figure out how to share the screen because it, it does give a sense of your style and your work um and the light you do get this feeling of air that it's not tangible, you know, that you can't put your finger on what you're seeing almost. Um, so, um, Raji, do you want to talk a little bit about your work? Yeah, sure. Um, so I'm a Chicago-based artist. Um, I'm also a computer programmer and I work in the field. And uh, my work is, um, I, uh, usually just transform units of representation in one system to another system. So for example, colors, you know, in images are transformed into text or text is trans transformed into colors. And uh, I write my own algorithm in a, in a computer program to do this. And uh, usually my works are printed on canvas. And uh, sometimes I paint over them or write over them and uh, or sometimes they're just works in their own right and so um just for an example i think i can probably share my screen here and still be talking so just give me a sec i am um, <laughs> you can tell you're the computer programmer <laughs> <laughs> um are you guys able to see my screen or no 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 huh. well let me see if i need to no, I think. Sorry. Here, now try and see if you can do it now. All right. Oh, yeah. Maybe you had control or something. Just give me a sec. It's not working. No, I was having trouble too. I don't know. And I've shared, I've done it before. I don't know quite. Yet. Yeah, it's not working. Well, <laughs> technology. Yeah, well, maybe we can, I can splice it in when we edit. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Um, so anyway, that's, you know, uh, so some works are painted over, some are written over, and some are just um, printed. And um, I think, I mean, there are several examples of those in the shows, I mean, in the works that are exhibited, so I wish, you know, if you guys, yeah, so if you look for at, example, the piece that you have the three different versions of, right? There's one. Yeah, yeah, right. So, so one is like written, and one is like uh, painted, and one is like uh, just the code printed on canvas. So, um, yeah, so that's that's the kind of work I make, and uh, I think that's it for the intro. So. So to both of you and Raji, you can start, like, which came first, the interest in science or the interest in art? 
like how did you how did you merge the two things so clearly you know um definitely the you know i have a degree in computer science and math so definitely the science part was first and uh you know i went to a liberal arts college i took some art classes i was really interested in art so i um i pursued that but my work was very um I mean, I don't want to say derivative, but I think we see a lot of abstract expressionism, you know, when you're an artist in college. And in some ways, you imitate those things without even really realizing that you're imitating it. So I feel, you know, I really separated my two worlds, even though I was working as a programmer. I, you know, that's what I'd done for a long time. I really separated my two worlds. And then when I was at the grad school at the Art Institute of Chicago, really just in my final year, like right before the thesis show, there's so much thinking about how can you synthesize, you know, these different aspects of your life and your learning. And that's when I really began experimenting with writing computer programs to, you know, sort of code images into these instructions, which I would print out on Canvas and then start uh, working, you know, with that. So, so it really came really like at the very end of my MFA at the Art Institute. So, that's amazing. Yeah. And how about you, Aliyah? Like, which came? Were you always interested in science, or were you kind of an artist looking for different themes that kind of interested you? Well, um, my first uh, when I uh, well, music was was my first. Uh, study of uh, I guess art form and uh, painting came later and uh, I well usually what I'm after so my aim is to express something that uh, I kind of feel but it doesn't necessarily have a verbal equivalent or visual equivalent so I was looking for ways to articulate to explain <laughs> actually what what I make and why and uh, well, I, I guess uh, my thinking about the world is probably a synthesis of, of what people in my family were engaged in, and there are a lot of physicists and uh, uh, psychologists and uh, people studying culture. So, so these are my interests. Uh, kind of to begin with, and uh, I first uh, studied uh, um, at the University of Humanities and uh, Social Sciences in Russia. So that kind of influences my outlook on life. So I look what um, uh, the latest uh, scientific discoveries are, how they um, explain the world we live in. Uh, I, I love uh, theoretical models uh, that scientists make and then they try, try to prove or disprove them and this kind of search and discovery uh, in a way that's what I, I do. Uh, well I think my... it's so interesting right now especially mm -hmm. because there's so much intersection between science right now and and how we live our lives like mm -hmm. we're looking for scientists to you know help us find meaning right now so much and so where does art fall into that like how as artists do you think that you can be kind of a bridge because I think that it's really important especially right now and both of you kind of translate the language that's you know it's very theoretical and it's very it's, it's hard sometimes to grasp and, and we could we could art speak it, you know, we could make it really like, you know, very scientific, but both of you have work that's very approachable. Mm -hmm. So I think that you're both really good at bridging the two things in such a, an, a definable way. Like, um, how do I want to say that? Like, I think that you both, well, do you feel that you both are acting as a bridge between science and your audience that's approachable? Do you feel like that's something you're trying to do? Or do you think that's just an effect of, of how it's been? Or... Well, I think, you know, 
Art really opens your mind to be like really curious. It gives us the space to like be curious and be free and be uninhibited. And I think, you know, science really needs that space to, to imagine the not yet imagined. Mm -hmm. So I think in our works, like both Olia and I, I think we are trying to, you know, depict something that's not usually depicted. You know, that's not usually there. Like, it's just our interpretations of whatever, you know, how she was explaining her work. And then for me, it's more like code that you can visually see. So there are these sensory, um, sensory, um, you know, responses to the work, even though it's very, uh, you know, it's analytical. It's, in my case, the work is analytical. It has like this extreme logic like logical structure behind it, but because it's visual, you can see it visually and you can connect with it visually. I think that sort of bridges the, the gap, you know, between the two. And I think that's like a really interesting space. Yeah, I agree. How about you, Do you feel like that? Uh, well, I look at science as a prevailing worldview and uh, well, what I actually do when preparing my work, I. I, in a way, I, I write mo models. I is like a paragraph of text where I summarize different variables that I want to interact in my work, and then I make drawings following these models. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so I know they, so I don't have an aim of explaining anything. I actually, <laughs> my aim is to find a, a solution to make perceptible of what it is I, I want to convey because well, my original thought is in a way is hidden from me. So as I work, it becomes more clear to me uh, as well as I hope for the people who look at my work. Mm -hmm. So, but sometimes I uh, do work as improvisation on a theme. So two pieces in, a, in a, the exhibit, uh, Redshift and Purple Spin, these are improvisations on a theme of color, but color is an um, indicator of energy. Mm. So that, that's what I do. <laughs> But right, no, and I think it's so interesting because, you know, when you think about energy or, you know, the science behind what that is and the science behind computer science, you know, our first instinct is to go, oh, God, I don't understand what that means, and or I couldn't imagine coding that. But when you look at your work, it pulls you in in such a way that you – you don't feel like, oh, God, that's above me. You feel like you move into it. And it's, I think it's really meaningful and it's really important work. And um, so, you know, I, I hope that you both see that there is such a value in that. And, and right now you both have made it so approachable. And I think that that's very important. Um, so as jurors, were there pieces in the exhibit, and I wanted to pull up the exhibit. So, were there pieces that you that you responded to, or that stood out in a way that you felt like, um, you know, echoed the same kinds of things that you're thinking about or or doing in your own work, or that you found interesting in particular? Um, yeah, I. I responded to, I wrote down the art, name of the artist, that Ryota Matsumoto, um, you know, he or she had uh, these uh, pieces that were photographs, but I think there was, it was, a, it was photographs of phenomena, like spectral, mm -hmm. you know, uh, it was, but then when it was transformed into a photograph, it was, so, it has this almost like a uh, sculptural quality to it. Mm -hmm. and. And then also very, um, it reminded me of like uh, fiber arts and, you know, like sculptural sort of fiber arts. So I responded to that a lot because I saw like this transformation that always interests me, you know, mm -hmm. it was like this scientific like sort of phenomena and then, you know, transform into this uh, image. And then also the same thing, I think with uh, Linda Olson, 
Lindsay Olson. Lindsay, right. Yeah, and so she was doing like bacterial uh, R fungus. Yeah, hers are the circles with oh. the bacterial. Those were very yeah. beautiful. And there was something about those, they almost had something that looked like yours when you break down your computer yeah. circles. And then they also had something about Aaliyah's that had this organic form that kind of forms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was an interesting piece. And yeah, so I like. Yeah. Yeah, I like those. And uh, I wrote down Howard Stendro. I hope I pronounce it correctly. He has a sculpture, a video of sculpture called mm -hmm. The Ballet. And uh, he, actually, I also remember he wrote a very interesting description of, of this work um, and the, about how he was working on achieving the movement of, of he, in his piece and um, and the movement uh, of, of the metal parts, uh, uh, I find it very attractive. I don't remember the, his statement, but visually, yeah, no, I know what you're it, talking about. It's the video, and it it moves like in this very almost like musical way, and it. Yeah. Yes, and uh, so I, I went and I looked at it several times, and uh, I really like it. So when it goes in slow motion, uh, it gives this motion of a flame. Um, so I, I thought it was interesting, and uh, I, I like this kind of color, the metallic color, and uh, so... Yeah. <laughs> No, I agree. I thought that was really interesting work too. And it, and the sculpture looked like it it had a reminiscent of your sculptural piece too, like this kind of organic space, but it was a form. Um, and then when you put the movement, or yours has the light, it has that feeling of um, infinity. You know that it just keeps going on. Um, so. Okay, so one thing that we're thinking about at the Art Center right now, especially since we're closed, and I didn't pre-warn you about this question, so I'm, I'm probably putting you on the spot a little, but James and I were talking about it today, and one of the things that we're confronted with as an art center, as an art institution right now, where we can't be open, and so we're, we're about building community and and pulling people together. And so in the face of this time, we really wanna think about, you know, going forward, what the role is of art. Like what's the impact? What's our role as artists and what's, what kind of impact can we have on society and, and how can we keep going forward to share our ideas and to do that in the face of so much going on in our world. You know, I, I just, um, I guess, you know, what makes art so urgent right now? Like what what makes it so important? Like is there something that you feel like even now more than ever, you're grateful to be an artist and to be able to do this and, and share your ideas? Um, I don't know, it's a big question probably, but I guess, even just bringing it down, like what's the impact that your work can have? And for me, I can tell you that I can see that it's it's profoundly important right now, especially. I mean, it's always been important, but I think in the context of our world right now and what we're going through to try to make sense of what's going on in the world in a visual way that communicates and brings people together is really important. Do you have anything you want to share? Well, uh, I think in the context of an art center, maybe right now is a good time for people who want want to take classes, uh, and you, you provide classes, and I think that's a good time to do that for those who interested. And uh, as far as looking at art, uh, I personally I prefer to see the real uh, object because it's important to me to see how the work was made mm -hmm. and it's hard to see on a screen so yeah that's been a big disappointment and that's been really a big challenge um i think 
you know, for so much of the work, the texture and, and looking at it and really being able to see it, you don't get the same thing looking at it virtually. But on the other hand, thank God we can do a virtual exhibit. So it's like, I feel yeah. so conflicted about it. Yeah, I think, you know, personally, I'm really grateful that I have this practice and it really, um, you know, slows things down for me. My work is very slow. And uh, so, I've, you know, it's almost meditative. It's, uh, it sort of helps me, um, you know, get, like, have my feet on the ground, so to speak, like not get, you know, so overwhelmed or consumed by everything else that's going on around you. And, um, and it's always, you know, nice to be um, surrounded by beauty and, you know, like to be involved in the act of like making something, creating something. So I think that's, art making can be so therapeutic. And I, I really feel that right now, that I'm really glad that I have this other aspect in my life that I can always turn to in times of like grief and, you know, Mm -hmm. much chaos and so much going on that sometimes you can't make sense of any of it at all yeah. so it's just yeah. sort of a it's a nice thing to have personally but I think it also like I said before I think it opens people's minds like art is so uh open you know it's so open-ended it's so you have to accept eventually what like the art artist makes very arbitrary choices about what to make and what not to make, and we accept it, you know, and I think it makes you a more accepting person. The more art you look at, I think the more accepting you kind of become because you're just, you see so many things that you could not have imagined. Yeah. And so yeah. I think it really opens up your world, and I think that's a really important function of art. Yeah, yeah. Do you want to share anything, Olivia? Oh, well, uh, I feel like I sometimes I have to work because if I don't make work, I, I feel very unhappy. <laughs> so, uh, but it doesn't mean that I'm happy when I make work necessarily. It's just like a kind of necessity to, to go and kind of work on it. And uh, uh, I, well, during the last two months, I was working on a sound piece of, which was meant to ex express kind of a feeling uh, of every day. So how I can express every day in uh, in sound. Uh, so I made a sound work, um, so two hours of um, well experimental sound work. Um. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I just want to thank both of you because really you inspired the theme of art and science, you know, just to give background, we had a, a studio visit to both of their studios at Mana Contemporary. And I walked out, you know, they didn't know, I mean, I don't know if you knew that we were visiting the other, you know, how well you knew each other, but we went from one to the other and I looked at our director of events and I just said, there's got to be an exhibit here on art and science. And I had just met Ellen Sander, whose work is, you know, the pinnacle of art and science and medicine. Mm -hmm. And so it was just such perfect timing. And I want to thank you both. And I'm sorry that we didn't get to have the physical exhibit. And hopefully one day we will still have your work at the Art Center because it is really something. I mean, both of you are doing incredible work. And I just, I'm happy to have met both of you and have gotten to really get to know you and, and get to know your work. I think I just, can't say enough about it. It's really such a pleasure. Um, yeah, thanks thank you. for the opportunity. It's great. Okay, yes, I'm thank you for the opportunity. The, I'm going to turn off the video part. I mean, the, but so we can still talk.